morning everyone the Saints are here can you nod or stick your hand out the window if you can hear me looks like we're good all right I made an announcement before if you're tuned in you know we're on AM 1630 like I said if there's somebody having trouble with that maybe you can shout out your window and help them out tell them to tune in to AM 1630 to hear hear the whole service today I want to welcome you for coming uh, this is uh, a, 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 a grand, fun experiment, adventure that we're trying. Uh, we wanted to gather folks together as we were able to do. We also wanted to make sure that we're keeping everybody as safe as we possibly can. We value here at Amazing Grace the health and well-being of everyone. And of course, uh, that's really on display during this COVID-19 time. So all of, the, all of the precautions we put in place are really important. There's a few that I want to remind you of before we get going. Uh, first of all, please make sure, most of you are in your car right now, I think that's great. Please make sure that if you get out of your car, you stay in your parking spot to make sure we keep social distancing. The, uh, as far as the building goes, the bathrooms, uh, the bathrooms are, are, we have bathrooms in the, in the building, but we want to reserve that for emergency purposes only. Uh, to keep people out of the building as much as possible. Afterwards, as much as we might want to hang around and talk to one another, we uh, need to not do that. So as soon as the service is over, our ushers, our ushers will start ushering you out of the parking lot. So wait for them to do that. Also, we'll be collecting an offering at the very end. You can drop that off in the basket with Craig. He'll be standing uh, by the way on the way out. Um, if if uh, if you uh, if you want to leave an offering. Uh, you can do that with Craig on the way out. He'll have a basket for you uh, as you're driving out. You won't have to get out of your car. Uh, and finally, um, communion. We are having communion today. Communion will come to you in your car. We'll give you instructions for that once we get to that point in the service. Uh, but we have a, a wonderful, very brief, but wonderful service for us this morning. So we will begin with a confession and forgiveness. Now you have nothing printed and printed to, to read from, but uh, what I encourage you to do, if there are uh, parts of this that you know by heart, because there might be, please say it along with us. Uh, but we'll begin with a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting now in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Got it. We, yep, Gabriel's on his way. Just had someone who needed some help with the radio. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah in the 43rd chapter. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. 
Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness and your grace waters our, our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, my, my masked friends in Christ, grace and peace to all of you from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The word salvation, the word salvation is used in the Bible about 127 times. And in hardly any of those passages is the word used to refer to dying and going to heaven for eternity. Which I think is a common way to think about that word. Like in Exodus, when Moses and the Israelites are standing on the banks of the Red Sea after, pa after passing through the divided waters, safe from Pharaoh's army, Moses leads Israel in a hymn singing, The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. Or in Luke, after Jesus eats with the corrupt tax man Zacchaeus, you remember that story? And Zacchaeus then vows to give half of his possessions to the poor and to pay back anyone that he's defrauded four times as much. After he does all that, Jesus says to Zacchaeus, Today, today, salvation has come to this house. In the Bible, salvation is not just some incomprehensible dream from far off in the future that we hope to someday know after we die. It's also not the, the, the single act of God in Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago in his death and resurrection in that far off and ancient city of Jerusalem. Salvation in the Bible is something that happens here and now, today in this place and in this present, in this time. As the Apostle Paul wrote to a bitterly conflicted congregation in Corinth, he wrote, See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. In the hour of our own deepest need, or even at times when we just seem stuck, and moving nowhere. The hope we have in Jesus Christ is not only that when we die, he will give us eternal life, but also that as we live today, God will rescue us, deliver us, heal us, give us rest. Even when we ourselves can imagine no way out of whatever troubles we're in, God promises, God's promise consistently given and fulfilled throughout the Bible is that he is present, creating possibilities that are often beyond our imaginations that will bring us salvation even today. Now, it's precisely because God often works beyond our imaginations that it's hard to always perceive what God is doing. That's why when God says to Israel in Isaiah, I'm about to do a new thing, God immediately asks, do you not perceive it? Can you see it? Can you sense it? Because Israel was stuck. They were stuck physically and they were stuck mentally. They were stuck in exile in Babylon. 
for a few generations by now. They had been exiled. They're taken against their will from their homeland, Jerusalem, about 900 miles away across the desert, and they had been stuck there for generations. They were also stuck mentally. They hadn't forgotten the stories of their past that define their life and their relationship with God, like the stories of creation and the exodus from Egypt, but they seemed to be unable to let go of the past in order to free their imaginations for God's new future. They'd become so over-focused on hanging on to their past, on saving themselves by recreating the past, that they became blind to what God was creating in the present right now. They stopped expecting anything really new from God at all. They would hear about the new thing God is doing and well, there's not going to be anything that new. Their faith was flat and fear and cynicism had begun to replace hope. Are there places in your life where it's possible that letting go of the past is needed in order to move forward into God's promised future? Maybe it's a grudge you have against someone else who caused pain for you or a loved one. Or a change in lifestyle that would lead to better health, like quitting smoking or overcoming an addiction. Maybe it's a mistake you've made or a missed opportunity for which you just can't forgive yourself. Or maybe it's your wistful memories of Amazing Grace Lutheran Church back in its golden years. This congregation has encountered many significant changes in the past five years. Just in the past five years alone, a lot of changes over its history. But the past five years, a lot of change. And now the pandemic and the social disruption is transforming everything even further. No one really knows exactly what life will be like on the other side of this valley, except that it will be different. I mean, did you ever think you'd be part of a, a drive-in worship service, complete with masks and social distancing? Who would have ever thought that? The world's changing. It has changed. And as you work towards moving into the future and calling your next lead pastor, some letting go will be an important part of moving forward. Every new beginning begins with an ending. There are certain things that we need to let go of to move forward. Former Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau said, the past is to be respected and acknowledged, but not worship. It is our future in which we will find our greatness. The past is to be respected and acknowledged, but not worshiped. It is our future in which we will find our greatness. God put it this way. After remembering for Israel the story of the Exodus in our passage today, remembering for Israel the story of the Exodus and the crossing of the Red Sea, God said, do not consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. See, God doesn't want us to forget the past. We need to acknowledge the past and even carry certain parts of it with us into the future. But we do that not to try to recreate the past in the present, but to learn from it and look to it as the foundation of our hope for a new future. We respect the past by bringing with us all the things that have built character, strength, and identity. And more importantly, we respect the past as a witness to the character and identity of God. To the power and faithfulness of a God who will never abandon us and will create a way when there seems to be no way. Now, God doesn't want us to forget the past, but I do know that God doesn't want us to live there either. 
Because God wants us with him, no matter what. And God has moved on from the past to a fresh present, creating a new future that is indeed different than what was even in January of 2020. God continues to abide. God continues to create anew. God continues to bring salvation today to the world and into your life in new and miraculous ways. So watch for it. For that we can say, thanks be to God. We're going to continue on. We're going to share the peace with one another. Um, here's what I'm going to do. We're, well, uh, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with me. Thank you. Now, you may greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace with a brief beep of the horn if you want to. Go ahead. Excellent. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless and keep you in eternal love now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace. Christ is with you.
Thanks be to God.